set up my dev environment on my new laptop. I recently got the M1 Pro MacBook and I do not have any of my development set up on here yet. So it's gonna be a from scratch, step-by-step -step tutorial on how to set up your dev environment. If you're new here, my name is Marcella. I'm a software engineer based in Los Angeles, California. The setup that I'm gonna be walking you through here is basically the same setup that I use at my job. I've been using this setup for years. It really just makes you more efficient. In addition to that, you can you know customize things and have some personal flair to it so it just makes things a little bit more aesthetically pleasing and I always get questions on my videos about my terminal specifically so I'm going to show you exactly how I get my terminal theme there's definitely more tools for different types of developments like if you're using Python you want to install PyCharm you can start off with this setup and as you are exploring different projects or different frameworks to work with I'm sure they have a getting started page that will tell you all the tools we need to get started with that framework just that disclaimer and now we're going to get into it so I'm going to screen record so you'll be able to see exactly what I'm doing and I'm also going to talk you through everything as well. So first things first, let's just start out with your Mac settings. See that my dock is hidden and it appears when I scroll to the side. So I always put my dock on the left side of the screen and then I always select the automatically hide and show the dock when you go to the side. It gives me extra screen space when I am not using the dock and most of the time I switch between apps by going to the spotlight. The other thing that I do, normally when you save things to your desktop, they show up on your actual desktop and some people like that. I personally hate that. This command here, setting this to true will make it show the icons and setting it to false will hide the icons from the desktop. Now, these things are not on my desktop. When you go to your finder and you actually see your desktop folder, that screenshot is still here. It's just not showing the icon on the screen anymore, which is exactly what I want. So now that we got that out of the way, we're gonna start actually downloading some stuff. The next thing you're gonna do is download Xcode. You do that through the App Store. That might take a little bit, so give that time. And while Xcode is downloading, you can go ahead and install Google Chrome. I already have mine installed. I love Google Chrome for developing and I use it as my primary browser. I love Chrome specifically for its console. It's just unmatched in my opinion, so feel free to download Chrome if you want to. Now I've got Xcode installed, so I'm just gonna close that out right now because I don't really need it, but that's good to have. Go ahead and download a few other things. One of them is iTerm2. When iTerm2 is done downloading, you just open up that zip file. Now you can just drag that into your applications folder so it'll move it into here. And you now have iTerm downloaded onto your computer. So if you open that up, it says, are you interested in learning tips of the day? This can actually be really helpful if you are a new developer. Highly recommend saying yes to this, but because I've used iTerm for a little while, I'm gonna say no. You're gonna see that it looks pretty much identical to your regular terminal that comes with your Mac, so they look literally the same. So we need to zhuzh it up. And the first thing I do is download ZSH. Click this install button. It tells you exactly what to type. So you type that in there. Oh, I was not supposed to type the dollar sign. There you go. So it already looks a little bit different and it does the autocomplete. So that's ZSH. The next thing that I do is download Power Level 10K. This is a theme specifically for ZSH. And it says right here, it emphasizes speed, flexibility, and out of the box experience. I don't really know what that means, but I just go ahead and copy the git command. It tells you to copy, to install, and then restart. So I'm gonna quit, quit iTerm2. Sorry, and then come back. And now we are using power level 10K. Tells you to restart again. And then you're able to pick various, various themes here. I think I like classic. I'm gonna go with Unicode, I'm gonna go dark. I'm gonna go with 24 hour format, angled one, sharp one. It's kind of like the flat, and then I like the one line compact few icons because otherwise it takes up too much concise and so now our terminal already looks much better than what it did before so it gives us the time if you're in a git repository it'll tell you what branch you're on and all that good stuff so the next thing that we're gonna do is color themes and it's right here there are so many different color themes that you can use this one's pretty cool you know feel free to look through all of these the ones that i this is the one that i use everywhere so i'm just gonna go ahead and save that one Go 
go to iTerm 2, you go to preferences, you go to profiles, colors, and you do color presets and you import. There we go. So, so you select Lovelace and it'll change all of that all of those colors for you. And that's what it looks like in here. The other thing that I like doing in here is you go to session, I believe. Yeah, enable the status bar, and you're able to configure the status bar. One of them is I do the network three put. I'm gonna do light colors on my rainbow. Um, I like doing the CPU utilization, memory utilization, clock. Back to where we were, there's a bunch of different options here but these are the components that i like in my status bar i like setting the auto rainbow to light colors because it makes it very pretty you can see them here that's going to be good for now and then in the appearance section you're able to move this to the bottom which i like it at the bottom versus the top oh uh, there we go i like i think i like the minimal maybe even dark let's see you're, you're able to play with the theme of the actual terminal itself not what's in it i don't like that Compact? No. I think I like minimal. So I'm going to go with minimal here. This is going to be my setup for my terminal now. You're able to see my memory usage, my CPU utilization, um, network utilization, and the time. And then if you're on a Git branch, it'll tell you the, the branch here as well. The other thing is you can choose a blinking cursor if you like that. So it'll blink like that, which I kind of like. And then you're able to pick the cursor. I personally like the underline. So I'm gonna do that. And I think that's gonna be it for my full setup. The next thing that I'm gonna download, we're gonna go back to Chrome and download VS Code. VS Code is Visual Studio Code. This is my primary code editor. I'm gonna just download the most stable build. VS Code has a ton of amazing plugins. You can go ahead and explore those on your own. So this is my code editor. I know for my color theme, I like, is it IU? Huh, it doesn't have. Yep, so I like IU light bordered. Actually, no, I think I like IU light no borders, yeah. My camera decided to stop filming, so I have to resort to voiceover for the rest of the setup. The last thing we'll do for VS Code is install the command line prompt so that you can easily open files from your terminal. And to do that, you go to view and then command palette and then install code command and path. And once that's installed, you're able to open files via the command line using the code command. That's really it for my code editor. Again, there's many plugins and I encourage you to explore, but that's all you really need to get started. Next up, I'm going to set up GitHub Access to my laptop this will allow me to push to and pull from github github already has articles on how to authorize your computer i use a personal access token and i generate the token on github and give it all the necessary permissions and then once the token is created i copy it and then when i'm prompted with the username and password for the username i just use my standard github username and for the password you'll use the personal access token that github just generated for you and now this laptop is going to be authorized to push to and pull from github i highly recommend using some sort of version control and storing your code somewhere other than just your machine next i'm going to download insomnia if you're developing apis i definitely recommend you use insomnia as your api client it's really useful for storing and maintaining requests and it has a nice ui and it's free so definitely a great tool for API development. That's gonna be basically it for what I'm gonna do today in terms of setup. Thank you for watching. I hope you got something out of that. And if anything, now you'll know how I get my pretty terminal that I always get questions about. Also, let me know if you enjoyed this video, if you wanna see more like this, um, if you have any other questions, comments, concerns, and yeah. Thank you again for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.